Hello and welcome to Down the Forest Path podcast. Today we're continuing in our elements series and we are going to look at the element of water. Water is seen as feminine and it rules the western quarter. It's the setting sun over the sea. It's the twilight of the evening. It's middle to old age, the wisdom of years. It is rain and all bodies of water. It is nurturing and holding, yet still with an element of danger, as are all of the elements when approached without caution. It is the cooling and dampness after the harsh summer, and is the autumn of our lives. With the element of water, we find love and peace, forgiveness and letting go. Just as the tides ebb and flow, so too do our emotions and the cycles of our lives. It's often the place of the other world in various cultures, traveled to by a journey over water. It is mystery and the rest at the end of a long day. Its colors are the blues and indigos of the twilight sky. Beneath the waves are portals to the fairy realm where the Lady of the Lake dwells. It is where the other world lies beyond the ninth wave. In spellcraft, we work with water in various ways, often through scrying, which is a form of divination where we gaze into the water for images and clues. Water is often used for peace and healing, for friendship and purification in spellcraft. Items are often cast into bodies of water for various purposes. Think wishing wells and the offerings our ancestors made to lakes and rivers. In the tarot, water is associated with the suit of cups. The iconic image of the cup is seen in many mythologies, most famously in the Arthurian Grail myths. But we also have older vessels, the cauldrons that we find in much of Celtic lore, for example, such as the cauldron of Anun or the cauldrons of Caridwen or the Dagda. These are all vessels of transformation, and within their dark depths, we can drink the elixir of life that reflects our journeys from our beginnings in the watery womb all the way to the tomb and beyond. The grail is a symbol of sovereignty. It is also the shared vessel of friendship and trust. The drinking horn or vessel of Norse mythology passed between the group over which is spoken words that become sealed in fate. It is the stirrup cup at the start of a hunt. It is the parting glass of Scottish folklore, drunk at the end of a gathering of friends. In witchcraft, the tools most associated with water are the chalice and the cauldron. The chalice is simply a smaller, more modern form of the cauldron. It is a tool that is sacred to the goddess, and to drink from the chalice in ritual is to partake of her divine energy. Magical creatures associated with water are mermaids and merfolk of all kinds, undines, selkies, kelpies, nereids, and monsters of all kinds across the globe. There's Ogopogo in the Okanagan Lake of British Columbia, Bessie from Lake Erie in the Great Lakes, or Champ from Lake Champlain in the U.S.-Canadian border. And, of course, the most famous of all, Nessie from Loch Ness in Inverness, Scotland. Other animals associated with the element of water include whales, dolphins, fish of all kinds, but especially salmon in Celtic folklore. There's also beaver, otter, frogs, herons, and other waterfowl, and, of course, made famous in witchcraft through Shakespeare, the newt, which is of the salamander family but is partially aquatic and I have some in my pond. Herbal correspondences are comfrey, marshmallow, rushes, water lilies, apples, think the island of Avalon, aloe, cucumber, daffodil and narcissus, datura, foxglove, hemlock, ivy, lettuce, willow, valerian, 
and seaweeds of all kinds. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, podcast on the element of water. And next time, we are going to look at the fifth element, which is spirit or aether. So thank you for joining me. And I look forward to being with you again next time. Take care.